for hash. You will get to go monthly, and then from there you will get the all-in-one package. So, minutes, airtime, data, and free WhatsApp just for you so that you can make sure your communication lines remain open and you don't have to suffer a situation whereby you're not talking. It's the all-in-one package from Safaricom. by freedom. Indeed. Professor P. L. Lumumba is still our guest. Mm. I mean, so, Prof, what needs to happen? And I know that you talk about getting angry enough. And we know that uh, the citizen has a, a, a critical role to play um, as concerns what happens in their country. It's a duty that you're called upon um, to do. So now with 50 plus million Kenyans who are in a position whereby things are not just going right, and we know that the tone must be set from the top, but there's something that Kenyans need to do. What's that? You know, Kenyans in need to demonstrate and dramatize their anger in a manner that is convertible into real action. Mm. If you look at specific areas, take for example in the area of education, we have this thing called uh, CBC. Nothing wrong with it, mm -hmm. philosophically. Mm. But if you look at the implementation, it is wrong, we don't have the funds. What should parents do? My view is that through parents' association across the country, we should use the avenues that are available to us. One of them is to use the court process. Mm -hmm. They will ignore the court processes, but if they ignore it, you go to the next step. Then you take action. And that action can even include withdrawing your children from school. Mm. These are things that have been tried and tested. In other words, we've got to expect some pain if we want change so that we don't just speak for one day and then yeah. we forget about it. Remember now in the education sector, you are typical politician are uh, taking their children to the British and American mm. system. So the education system is for the common person. Mm. Yeah. That is why they don't care about it. And if we acted consistently in that manner, we will send a clear message, even at the university level. Why should you be banding in students into band one, band eight? B band, whatever it is, all students ought to be treated in a manner that they are in other parts of the world, and that is give loans to those who deserve it, give bursaries to those who deserve it, and this should be done in a manner that is implementable. Mm. Yeah. And if you go to the health sector, one of the questions is, why are we migrating into the new system? Why must we always be changing things? How does a country build a system? Yeah. If you go to the Scandinavian countries, which we can learn from in the health sector, you have a sector that is improved every other time. If there was a problem with the NHIF, explain to us how it is being implemented. This opaque approach of doing things which ends up into a scandal is something that does annoy. And once again, mm. people should just say, we are not going to pay into that system. And people can create alternative systems. There have been countries where there are tax boycotts. And if that is done, I remember at one time, the Langata Karen Association went to court and said, we are not going to pay our rates mm -hmm. to the Nairobi City Council at that time. And they were granted orders and they used that money to improve their environment. Yeah. I think that that should happen. If you go into the area of taxation, look at the usurious tax. Kenya is one of the countries where banks make tons mm. of millions of money. If you are a business person, who betide you if you go into the bank and take a loan? So there are things that people can do. Yep. I know there are quite a number of organizations which talk about these things. I know they are public-spirited individuals who do these things, but we are too much spectators. We expect some people to be the warriors in the arena while we watch and spectate. We must be engaged. Mm. That is what happens. Civic engagement and is something that we have seen consistently in different countries and it can make governments change their stances. The countries that we see, which have progressed to the level that, of which you give examples of, at whatever level that you want to see, there was revolution that took place. Whether there was a revolution of ideas or there was a revolution of actual brick and mortar behavior, action that took place. 
if you actually want to see change, if you want to see that governance and leadership is carried out in a proper way, that development happens void of things like corruption, at least to a certain level, does revolution need to take place? You know, we are headed in that direction. Let, mm. Let's not beat, beat about the bush. If we are not careful, and be wary of the fury of a patient population. Mm. When you least expect it, something can ignite the population in a manner that was never expected. I'm one who believes that we should exhaust all systems, all methods of having peaceful change. But if peaceful change is impossible, let me tell you, mm. Revolution is the language of the unheard, mm -hmm. and it can happen. Let us not <coughs> cheat ourselves that this country is immune. I was intimately involved in the attempt at making peace in the year 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. And but for the intervention of the international community, this country was descending into civil war. Mm -hmm. And once again, and I, I traveled this country, I traveled in the informal settlements in this city, the anger is palpable. You take a taxi, you take a border border, and they want to have a conversation Everybody with you. Everybody wants to talk about And they are telling you, we are angry, what can we do? Yeah. And somehow, if you look at our parliament, which is neutered, it speaks not about any of these things. They are going to spend millions of shillings now in the process of impeachment of the deputy president, mm. going around the country to ask us whether the deputy president is guilty or not guilty. Who among them is without sin? Mm. The sins that they are accusing the deputy president of, each one of them, almost without exception. I would have wanted my parliament to discuss the economic situation. I would have wanted to hear my parliamentarians talking about the lack of salaries or proper remuneration for different cadres of the society. I do not hear that. Mm -hmm. Instead, they are defending, uh, they are fighting about uh, uh, the constituency development fund, which I don't think they should manage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is not their duty. And when you walk around Nairobi or any part of the country, you see the poster of a member of parliament, yeah. Yeah. constructed courtesy of this parliament. That is our tax money. Should not bear the image of an individual. It is sad, my sister. Mm. It is sad, Eric, that we are in this space. But I can guarantee you, if it is not in our lifetime, if this continues, this country is going to pay. And that could be the revolution mm. that will change things. That if we are not careful, it could become worse before it becomes better. And I said in my last letter, the first letter in 2023 to Mr. Odinga and the president, then I told, I told them, let us paddle this water while it is knee deep. Mm. Because when it gets to our necks, we will sink, all of us. Yep. Mm. All of us. Mtego wapanya, uingia waliomo, Do you think they get it? Because the same way you go around the country, it's the same way these political leaders, especially the top political leaders, if you talk about William Ruto, Raila Odinga, uh, Musali Mudavari, Kalonzo Busyoka, they have traversed this country. They have engaged with people, different socioeconomic backgrounds, different. They have listened and talked to people. Is it possible that they don't get the message? I sometimes I think they don't get it, and if they get it, they don't care. But remember, your typical Kenyan politician prepares the ground before they go there, and preparation mm. of the ground means that you send advance parties with mm. the small denominations of Kenyan currency, and you ensure that the ground is softened in that way, and properly choreographed, and you have your goons who shut down any individual who holds a contrary view. Mm. And because of that, quite a number of them are shielded from the reality. But yet, there is so much noise being made in the Kenyan environment that they must know that people are angry. They and must be they, hearing something. If, if yeah. they ever doubted it, the dramatization of this anger by the young people in the month of July must and should have sent a chilling message. Mm. And for the first time, you could see even the head of state did not leave the country. Mm. Mm. 
The head of state sent the finance bill. The parliamentarians were scared. The cabinet ministers were no longer flying their flags. Yeah. They, they got it. But somehow, memories are short and selective. That is why we must keep on reminding them. But as I said a little earlier, when a country is hurtling towards its destruction, even when God reasons with the leaders, they think God mad. Mm. I fear that we may be in such a state. We have fear there are politicians in this country who think they are larger than life, almost as large as death. Mm. And that is part of our problem. They are insensitive. Even when the truth sits on their laps, it telling is. them, behold, I am the truth, mm. they refuse to listen. And if they do listen, they refuse to hearken. You know, Prof, if the president called you for a meeting and said, I've received your letter, yes. please come, let's have a cup of tea, let's talk about the issues that you raise. Yes. Tell me what to I'm do. sure he'd explain to you and tell you a couple of things. For yes. example, he'd tell you on the issue of CBC and education, there's been you know poor implementation of cbc and i come in halfway through the beginning of implementation i form a task force and i tell them go listen to the people engage with the people and come and tell me the best way from your own professional uh, advice for us to roll this thing out and that is what you see the role of, of cbc the um, new university funding model this is addressing all the challenges that we have from primary to post-secondary education if he tells you about uh, universal health coverage, it's a program that has been there in government uh, departments for very many years. Now we are saying, let's roll it out. It needed laws. Experts came and said, let's have laws. Those laws were taken to parliament. They were discussed, they were passed. Now we are implementing it. There's a challenge in implementation. I am forming a team to look at how to implement it. PLO, I'm working with the best interests of this country at heart with very many moving parts. I would tell, particularly this president, I would say, but Mr. President, you've been in government since 1997, so this is not new to you. I would tell him, Your Excellency, you served as the deputy president of this country for the last 10 years. All these issues have been raised over the years, and I am a citizen who knows. I know, for example, that the CBC ought to have been piloted. Did you go through the pilot phase? Were the individuals who are involved, the real individuals who have expertise in the area? And I would say revisit it mm -hmm. and make sure that you have a pilot phase because we cannot experiment with education. I would remind my president that, number one, remember that under the East African Community Treaty, we said that we would harmonize our education across the East African community. We are now going solo. In other words, we are getting it wrong, Mr. President, on the education. Get real experts who are there. And I would remind the president, look at uh, the commission that we have had whether it's the Bisha Commission, whether it's the Ominde Commission, the Gashadi Commission, the Koech Commission, the Munavu Task Force, all these task forces have brought in things and made recommendations, which in my view, I can tell you are not being followed. That is on education. Mm. On health, I would tell him that let us not change the names of things. We add Kenya Farmers Association, then we change it to Kenya Grain Growers Association. Mm -hmm. A rose by any other name is a rose. What we need to do is to look at the systems, look at the NHIF. Part of the problem with the NHIF is simply theft, robbery on an industrial scale. Changing the system and digitizing without changing the DNA and the character and the culture of the people who run those institutions who are not experts is not going to help. Once again, therefore, pilot the system. And there is no shortage of individuals from the private sector who can help you in this regard. In the area of uh, agriculture, for example, we must ask ourselves what kind of seeds are we selling to our people we know that Bayer and monsanto and all these foundations including the bill gates the agenda is to eliminate and to control our food mm -hmm. ecosystem mm -hmm. let us go to the experts in other words we have all these and i would tell the his excellency look at the adc farm that were taken look at the uh, kenya agriculture finance corporation. corporation all these things exist and we were doing very well until 
we politicize, and I will tell the president, by politicization, I mean appointing individuals who have no knowledge nor expertise in these areas, while they are individuals who can serve. And I would tell him, Your Excellency, if you did the right thing, if you put the right individuals in the right place and gave them the opportunity to serve mm. without undue interference with clear goals that you have set for them, then we would be on the proper trajectory. I would then lastly tell the President, Your Excellency, remember that we have promised ourselves under Vision 2030 that we are going to do things in a particular way. We have also promised ourselves under the East African Community Treaty that we are going to do things in a particular way. We have promised ourselves under Africa Agenda 2063 and Sustainable Development Goals that we are going to do things in a particular way. I can tell you, Mr. President, I read and engage with this document. We have engaged the reverse gear and we are moving with jet like speed in the wrong direction. Mr. President, task forces is the avenue that is followed by individuals who do not want anything implemented. If you don't want it done, appoint a task force. <laughs> That is what I would tell His Excellency. You make good points. And you'd push back and say, you know, I am working the best way I can. I have sought, when you tell me to engage with professionals, engage, the people I've engaged with are professionals. The people who've come and said, let's move into CBC are professionals. They're professors, educationists. The people that I appointed in that task force led by Professor Munavu are professionals in education. The people who are engaging in the rollout of uh, universal health coverage are professionals in education. They are actually players even in the sector. Some of them are heavily invested in this, so they want to succeed. This is what I would tell the president that I hear, and I can say this on authority from some of the individuals, that when some of these professionals come to you, Your Excellency, they tell you what they think you want to hear rather than what you need to hear. Some of us who have no offices to lose are telling you what you need to hear. And I think that that is why I'm saying that there is this need to give people the opportunity to enjoy autonomy in terms of exercise of the authority that is granted unto them. And, and uh, we hear it from the grapevine. I, I, I serve in a number of boards and the people say, no, when we go to some of these meetings, we, we, are, we just sit like primary school children and we are told what to do. <laughs> And then we do it because we want to protect our jobs. Mm -hmm. But the right thing is that you allow people to deliver. And, and it has been done. Look at the administration of President Kibaki. Of course, he reigned he ran the country under a different dispensation. Mm -hmm. The 2010 constitution was not in full flair. Mm -hmm. but, but, but you saw that there was the, the freedom given to cabinet ministers and uh, senior public officials to engage and and they did certain good things but here we are we are much more impressed with drama uh, cabinet ministers uh, tweeting i've now arrived in the office <laughs> i'm now in a meeting i'm launching in my <laughs> recently in my rural village they launched a solar system which started operating Last year, it was being launched for the third time. <laughs> this is drama. And this kind of drama is going to take people nowhere. I know a place where they claim they, were, they are done a boho. What they are done was to bring a water bowser. Ah. And then the individual who was launching was opening. After that, nothing. In the digital space where you say we are digitized. I attended one and a few minutes after it had been launched, it was not working. You know, this <laughs> kind of drama and statistics, we have done this, I done this, and there is no depth, is what is making the people angry. I mm. can give you a, a, a number of public offices today, even the police. Only yesterday in my rural home, there was a, a, a theft and my people reported it to the police post out there. And you know, they said, we will not investigate until you give us money. I had to call and said, are you now telling me mm. that a crime cannot be investigated until a citizen pays money? Will you give me a receipt? Mm. Says, tell me how much money. I'm going to send it and I want the receipt. How many 
are finding themselves in that space. And I remember this, Eric, at one time. Mm -hmm. If despite your best intentions and your best efforts, you are not delivering, then you allow others to deliver. Mm. Mm. It's not working. Mm. It's not working. Kubali to. to yourself mm. as well. <laughs> Kubali, yeah. mm. So that the country knows. Mm. <laughs> it's hard to admit. Yeah. Prof, thank you very much for joining us today and for always having time to have this conversation with us uh, as a people. It's now time for you to leave. You can now tweet. <laughs> I am now leaving the studio. I am now leaving the studio. Thank you very much. I wish you the very best. <laughs> Sorry, Thank sana. you. Keep it here for more conversations. In the next hour, after this uh, engaging conversation with, don't go, Prof. We didn't. We didn't say that. We, we didn't mean it. Can you jokes? In the next hour, we're going to talk about you know um, just financial awareness. In this economy, then the way things are, you know, you still have to live. You still have to take your children to school. You still have to think about your health care. You still have to think about, um, you know, how you're living, your daily costs. How do we navigate this? We have invited the uh, CEO of uh, Housing Finance, HF Kenya, to come and take us through the thinking from that perspective of a financial expert. And then at 9 o'clock, we talk about this UHC and the rollout into Shifsha. And Moses Kuria will be joining us. These are the conversations that we're having today. This is Kenya's biggest conversation, the Situation Room. We'll tell you as well how to win 3,000 shillings courtesy of Safaricom Home Fiber and 2,500 courtesy of Loop. Download and let's engage. It's